from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Welcome back to KPIX News this morning. The time now is 629. I'm Devin Fuel. Good morning. I'm Melissa Kane. The air quality is slightly better today in parts of the Bay Area, but far out in the East Bay, still pretty bad. This is what things looked like toward Livermore yesterday. That's an area experiencing some of the worst smoke. We also have a look at Ocean Beach in San Francisco, where visibility was slightly better yesterday. You can actually make out some of the buildings there in the background. And let's get right to Julie with a look at the air quality index around the Bay Area today. Yeah, we are looking at unhealthy air quality once again, really through the weekend, right? But we are seeing a little bit of improvement, at least this morning, uh, for the sort of western half of the bay, if you will. Let's go ahead and take a look at that smoke forecast. You can see it goes from deep reds to a little bit of a lighter red. We're not talking a total improvement, but we are talking at least a bit of improvement, though still poor air quality. You do want to reduce that uh, outdoor activity. Now, right now, air quality, as I mentioned, is unhealthy for sensitive groups. Those, those uh, areas indicate by the orange on your map and then unhealthy for everyone where you're seeing red. This will change throughout the day today. Likely we will see air quality decreasing to unhealthy for everyone. So the air quality forecast is unhealthy across the board. Of course, it is another spare the air day. We continue to see smoke from that fire being filtered into the Bay Area, being trapped into our local valleys. Uh, the smoke will continue through Tuesday and then we see a change in the weather pattern. We're looking at some rain and I will talk more about that coming up. Devin, over to you. If you're not feeling well because of the smoke from the Butte County wildfire, you're not alone. One local doctor says people are not necessarily being deprived of oxygen, but their bodies are having to work harder to get it. Dr. Michelle Johnson is a pulmonologist with the Department of Veterans Affairs in UC San Francisco. She says that symptoms include headache, eye irritation, scratchy throat, and even nasal discharge. And our respiratory system is built so that the larger particles actually get caught up in, in the nasal passages. That's why we have hairs in our nose and we have these mucous membranes and they sort of get stuck there. And that's when some people say, well, you know, when I blow my nose, I get all this stuff that comes out. Well, the best advice is to keep wearing those masks if you're outdoors for an extended length of time. And more than a week after the fire broke out, many evacuees of the Camp Fire in Butte County are still trying to get a roof over their heads. Uh, lots of people are living out of cars and tents, and one large campsite outside of a Walmart in Chico has been ordered to close down today. At the same time, FEMA has just opened a new service center at an old Sears store, and that agency just launching its housing assistance program, but that doesn't mean that there will suddenly be more places to stay in the area. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get people to move outside of Chico and Orville because you got 52,000 people that came down from that mountain. Nowhere to go. And you can't just double the population of even a city like Chico overnight and expect that that's going to hold. The city and county say they are working with evacuees to move them from the Walmart parking lot to a Red Cross shelter at the Butte County Fairgrounds. Crews in Southern California keep making progress on a large wildfire in Ventura and Los Angeles counties. The 98,000 acre Woolsey fire is now 84 percent contained. The deaths of three people are linked to that fire. Now, meanwhile, stories of heroism are also emerging from that wildfire. One involves a man who stayed back in the firestorm to help save his neighbor's home in Calabasas. Alan Nelson assured his neighbors that he would stay and try and save their homes with one hose. He spoke with CBS's Carter Evans. The embers are flying through the air and, and you've got this garden hose. Was there ever a point where you thought, I, I'm outnumbered here? It, it felt like everything was, was it, like, it, like I'm an idiot for being up here, but I would, if, I, if it came to it again, I would do the exact same thing because I really do feel like if, if those houses caught, and they would have, it could have been 20 more, 30 more homes that have gone. Very thankful, very grateful. And, you know, I love that we have the neighbors that we have, and we have each other's back, and we look out for each other. The Woolsey Fire has destroyed more than 800 structures. And after a day of touring wildfire damage around the state, President Trump met with people affected by another tragedy, that mass shooting in Thousand Oaks. The president met with first responders and the parents of victims yesterday while people gathered outside of that borderline, borderline bar and grill to honor those killed in the shooting earlier this month. Now, president Trump reflected just before he jetted off on Air Force One. We just hugged him and we kissed him and everybody and... 
and it was very warm. I was with the parents of, of uh, a young, very young supporter, a young supporter wearing a Trump shirt and uh, just a terrific young man. So it was a tough thing to do. This has uh, been a tough day. There was also a memorial service for Coronado resident Justin Meek, who was also killed in the shooting. Some local veterinarians say their offices are getting a lot more calls from pet owners concerned about the smoky air's effect on their animals. The concerns are also noticeable at Del Monte Dog Park in San Jose's Midtown area. It's been much less crowded in the past several days. Usually there'd be about 12 dogs or so, but right now it's just her. Dr. Lauren Spencer, an overnight emergency vet in West San Jose, says she has seen an increase of otherwise healthy pets coughing and sneezing. If you're wearing a mask, if you're minimizing your time outdoors, try to minimize the time your, your pet is outdoors as well. Skip the long walk, just take them out for short bathroom breaks. Dr. Spencer says that once pets have respiratory symptoms, complications can happen quickly, so it's best to bring pets to the vet at the first sign of any problems. Today marks 40 years since more than 900 members of a San Francisco-based cult were killed in a mass murder-suicide in Guyana. They were in the South American country in a compound called Jonestown, established by Jim Jones, leader of the People's Temple Cult. San Mateo County Congressman Leo Ryan, staff members and some news crews went to Jonestown to investigate concerns about that cult. A group of temple members assassinated Congress Congressman Ryan and four others at a nearby airstrip. That was followed by what Jones called a, quote, revolutionary suicide. He pressured his followers to kill themselves by drinking cyanide lace punch. Those who refused were shot or injected with that poison. One of the people wounded during the assassinations in 1978 was Jackie Spear, an aide to Congressman Ryan, who was now a member of Congress herself. She was shot five times and waited 22 hours for help to arrive. Today, she will be at Book Passage in Corte Madera for a noontime event to promote her memoir, Undaunted. A memorial for the Jonestown's victims will be held at 11 this morning at Oakland's Evergreen Cemetery, where remains of unclaimed and unidentified victims are buried. Now, this afternoon in San Francisco, a series of events begins at 145 at the former People's Temple site at 1859 Geary Boulevard. It will be followed by a march down Fillmore and a program at the Fillmore Mini Park. The FBI is looking into the death of a 52-year-old woman who was a passenger on a cruise ship heading from Florida to Aruba. She reportedly plunged from an upper deck onto a lifeboat after struggling with a man who was seen choking her. Now, the cruise ship came to an end yesterday with the Royal Princess back in Fort Lauderdale. And vacationers say they are no close to answers about the tragic death of their fellow passenger. I'm shocked, yes, that it happened on the ship I was on. You felt bad for the, the victim, obviously. A spokesperson for the prosecutor in Aruba says an autopsy was performed there and investigators did calm the ship before it returned to sea. And a new video of a motorcycle crash and rescue. Surveillance footage shows a car turn and hit a motorcyclist in Los Angeles, sending him cartwheeling through the air. You see there he lands right in front of a home. Then a man runs down the driveway to help there. All this happened on Monday. That's Veterans Day. That homeowner in the video is himself a veteran, and he says he partly relied on his military training. I didn't even realize, to be honest, that, that that's what the day was at the moment. For some strange reason, as it turned out, the young man was delivered literally to my doorstep, and uh, I could not ignore that. I had to help him, as I would anyone else. Several other people also rushed over before the ambulance got there, and the motorcyclist is now in intensive care. Here in the Bay Area, local veterans got a new set of wheels in San Francisco. More than 100 bikes were given out to veterans in need. The bikes were donated to the Soma Rotary Club and refurbished with volunteers adding lights and providing locks. I've got PTSD. Most of the time I just isolate in my apartment, but now that I have a bicycle, I'll be able to go out by myself on the bike and get out of my apartment and it'll be good exercise too. And this is a gigantic blessing. The Rotary Club says it's given out at least 600 bikes in the past seven years. Veterans also received free Warriors t-shirts. And before you go, you got to check out this video. A home break-in, but in this instance, the suspect is not a burglar, 
but a deer. Yeah, you got to see this video from Houston. Two girls were home alone when one of them saw a deer on a security camera. And soon after, they heard a crash. The deer had broken a back bedroom window and leapt through. Uh, one girl immediately called her mom and the police. And she's like, no, there is a deer. She's, and then all of a sudden, it's hitting the windows. And then it's jumping through the windows and screaming. And yeah, and then she hung up. A police arrived, they moved around furniture, and they ushered that frightened animal through the house. And after a few slips and falls, bless its heart, that wow. deer finally arrived at its exit. I wonder if homeowners insurance would cover damage from a deer. I like that they called mom and then the police. Right. We understand what's important here. I feel like I would do that too. <laughs> Call my husband, then the police. All right, well, thank you for joining us.